bring it up. But I, I, w- I want to tell you some of the things that I know about these two men. All right. Uh, <laughs> when, I, when I started in my small business, he was already an established person who uh, we all looked up to at the time. And I'm talking about the period of about 1930. When did you start in your activity office? Well, it was about, about that time. Uh, about that yeah. time. Well, I started in 1931, and I, we already that, knew who Arthur Collins was. I don't, I don't know. Did you find me to be an old man? <laughs> well, you have to tell you something about Jim. Now, I don't know whether my story is going to be correct or not, but I worked and did some work for a chap named Dr. Brinkley, the goat gland expert. Yeah. You know who his biggest benefactor was? This man. Right. When he was making these uh, high power stations on the Mexican border to teach us how to listen to broadcast radio up in New York City, we could hear these XEA and XEB and the rest of them louder than we could our local stations. And we didn't think too much of them at that time. <laughs> Am I correct about that? I was there. And uh, what, uh, what year was this that you, uh, uh, Jim, that you 31. first? 31. Let's say about that same time. I mean, about that same. So they were, we're all talking about the same, talking about an era uh, that uh, uh, was very important in the history of the United States because this was the, the era of the uh, collapse of the stock market, the uh, bank holidays, and when the three of us were out in the street corner selling apples. Right. <laughs> sure. Right. And the price was right, too. <laughs> but uh, plenty of people out of work. The, uh, I, feel, I feel that I'm out of place in this particular group because of the fact that these people have accomplished so much and have done so much for our industry and uh, if I can just bask in the uh, uh, shadow of their achievements, I'll consider myself very lucky. I mean, I'm, well, I, I feel that you, very, you're well, all well, very distinguished people. You, and you can't get two such famous people in the same place, and then when you throw in one like me, I balance it off. <laughs> well, we consider you one of, the, one of them. That's right. Right. Well, Art, do you want to tell us anything about you, Collins Radio you know, and how it started? Just, say, just get on the get on the tape. Uh, 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 and you know what? I'd like to ask you questions. When you started out, was your general achievement to make a good amateur set, or were you seriously thinking about commercial radio? I was seriously thinking about uh, aviation radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, the aviation yeah, aviation radio, right, right, of course, that was your... Right, that was very correct. The, the the now, problem. I'm uh, I'm going to ask Jim a question. Yeah. When you started out in your career, what was your uh, achievement uh, goal at that time? What were you, you weren't well, shooting for uh, high-power uh, megawatt uh, transmitters and things. That, uh, you had something in mind, but... Well, at first... Uh, I had built a high power medium frequency transmitter. Right. And I had the ambition to. When you say medium frequency, you're talking about around the market. Standard broadcast. Yes. Yeah. And I had the ambition to build a high power, high frequency transmitter. And when I've done that, I had the ambition to build a high frequency, right. very low frequency. When you talk about low frequency, are you talking about 25 low low KC? Frequency, 14. 14 is low as 30 that? KC. Uh huh. We've uh, had the opportunity to do all of this. Incidentally, uh, Cutler is the first big one that we put in, two, mil- two megawatts, you know. And I've been invited to the 25th anniversary of that station. They're going to celebrate it next to June 21st. I mentioned this before. 25 years. I mentioned this before, but I'd like to have you tell the story, if you will, of how you got involved with the uh, financing these Mexican border stations. And, well, am I right about uh, John Brinkley? I mean, Dr. not John Brinkley, whatever his name was. Dr. Dr. Brinkley. Brinkley left Kansas and built a station in, in uh, Via Cunha, Mexico, and during that period, we went to higher and higher power. We went for 
50 kilowatts to 180 kilowatts to 500 kilowatts. Well, you you, you understand that no one today will remember the, the Brinkley and his fame, but he was known as the, the goat gland specialist. In other words, that, uh, he had a philosophy that he had something he could sell you that would give you eternal life. <laughs> and so he used this man as his catalyst to get the word around. So he wanted a, a broadcast station uh, that you could hear any place in the world, and I'll be sure that you did. I mean, <laughs> we used to listen to it at Chugwater, Wyoming, when it was in Kansas, uh, and then later on in Mexico. Well, there were the, the Mexican stations were the ones that uh, gave us uh, the fits in the broadcast industry. Yeah, <clears throat> they called them the border bandits. Station. Yeah, that's right. But uh, yeah, was was most of that financing? Uh, U.S. money to, to help you to get that stuff Well, it was Dr. Brinkley finance all the uh -huh. way and what he did was sell advertising. And well, is, is, it a fair, is it a fair statement to say that that was the beginning of your career, uh, to make it a major career? As far as... I mean, financing and you, you getting you... I think that, I guess well, right. after you got out of uh, the high-power broadcasting, you were with Weldon and Carr, weren't you? Weldon. Just after the war, we set up the consulting mm -hmm. firm. Well, One of the most prestigious consulting engineering firms in the United States. And then, uh, you and Jansky and Bailey were the yeah. really the tops. Ring. Right, Andy, Andy Ring. Mm -hmm. yeah. a, lot of, a lot of good ones. Right, and Bob Hammett came out of your department, didn't he? He was with us. Right, and he's in San Francisco, and he's carried on your traditions. And his uh, ethics and everything were, uh, I believe, was a result of your training. Uh, it's one of the I super consulting case. engineering no. firms in the country. Uh, Jim Doherty was with you for a while, Jim Doherty, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you now, I don't know what else you'll get out of this, but it's given Fred Link an awful lot of satisfaction just to be in the company. Arthur? Me too. Okay, thanks a lot. Oh, no, there's an old friend. And a compatriot. Thank you, Fred. Jim, thank you very, very much. I appreciate it very much. much. Good to see you. Well, thank you, gentlemen. This thank will go you. into the archives of treasured tapes. Thank you very thank much. You. Al, you've just done a good job.